Okay, now we operate under our crane neck magnifying glass. Turn the lights off. Spot on. And let's do it. So first, we have to place our fossil object in the middle of the sand bag. In this case, that little shell. We push it into the sand bag till it's kind of stable. Okay, and now we try to remove the adherent sediments out of the shell. Um, and we do this very gently with our artist brush. Um, a little pressure, but not so much. And then just blew the dust and the sediments away. If the sediments are too sticky, then we should use dentist tools like those here. You can get those from your dentist because he has to replace it um, every couple of weeks. And with those dentist tools, you can easily um, loosen your sediments or the sediments in the shell and then um, you can remove it with the brush. So when you work with the dentist tools, you just have to make sure that you don't scratch the surface of your fossil object. Like always, be very gentle, not too much pressure. And so sheet by sheet we remove the sediments, clean it with the brush, and like you see, now the shell is kind of clean. Um, you also would like to have some special tools, some tiny spatulas, um, to do this. But Ronnie, I don't have a spatula that small. I only have the one in my kitchen. Yes, of course, Anna, you're totally right. But we can easily make our own. All we need is an anvil and a hammer, like this one. And if we do not have an anvil, we need two hammer. So we place one hammer at the sandbag and then we just take a nail, a regular nail, like this one, and we just have to flatten the tip to whack it with the other hammer. And that way you can make your own spatula. So you can do this with different kind of nail and different sizes and also use some needles or insect pins and that way you can easily create your own set of different spatulas in different sizes. And then um, you just have to fix it um, at the end of a pan. And that way you will get some very useful tools to clean your fossil object. So with our self-made tools, our tiny spatulas, um, it is much easier to clean tiny gaps and very small structures at the surface of your fossil objects. Like you can see here, um, those spines that need to uh, be cleaned and the sediments between those spines have to be removed. I use those spatula and a tiny needle, like you see. But you can also use it for other fossil objects, especially um, fossil shark teeth. Um, in fossil shark teeth, you have um, fine, tiny foramina, um, like little pores in the uh, root section, and those are very important diagnostic features, and you have to remove the sediments and the clay out of those foramina. And I use tiny needles and the dentist tool, like you can see here, and step by step, um, you will have a perfect fossil. And it makes it much easier to um, identify your fossil object. But you can also use it um, with bones. Like you can see here, there are also fine structures um, that are covered by sediments. And with those special tools, it's kind of easy to remove the sediments. Okay, now that we have cleaned all our fossils that were covered by sediments and removed all the dust, clay and the mud, I need to tell you that you always have to keep in mind that cleaning fossils is a slow process.
process. There's no rush. These fossils have been in the ground for millions of years and it will take time to clean them properly. So doing it too quickly and messing up is not worth it. Yeah, my parents always call that the quickie demo method and it never works. So it's always good to just take your time in working with fossils. Good point. And just think about the smile on your face <laughs> um, when you have a perfect and clean fossil. The time you will have invested is definitely worth it then. So now we've cleaned the fossil leaves and the fossil teeth and the fossil bones, etc. Um, and so now we'll look at this one, which is giving me a hard time because the fossils and the matrix are pretty much the same thing. We have um, a hard calcite limestone and it's very difficult to get the fossils separated from the limestone without destroying the fossils themselves. Yeah. In this case, we are now reaching the Super Bowl of <laughs> fossil cleaning. Um, and actually, um, we are now entering the realm of fossil preparation, um, which is a whole new story. And we will talk about that um, in an extra tutorial about the real preparation of fossil objects. So that's when we'll start talking about how to use a Dremel tool or other dental tools that actually get you to the point where you're um, separating the fossil from the matrix when it's all hard together like this case. Right. So for now, stay tuned and have fun cleaning your fossils and please share your experiences with us. And please upload images of your amazing fossils to the website. Now, Ronnie, there is a separate photography tutorial on the website, right? Yes, there is. Because we would also like to advise you on how to get good images of your amazing fossils and um, in the best way possible. Because sharing is what this project is all about. And sharing information and learning from each other is crucial to make this work. And building a community. Yes. Thanks, and see you next time. See ya. Bye.